Hello everybody and welcome back to our lecture series. I'm Ted, your host, and for this lecture we're going to conclude our discussions on World War II. Um, to begin with, let me just do a customary recap and just touch bases on what we discussed in our last lecture. So, in our last lecture we looked at how the, the different wars united. Um, the uh, the war, World War One, World War Two, was not a unified war from the onset. It was the Nazi declaration of war against the United States that linked um, regional wars into uh, into a unified war. Um, in in East Asia, you had the uh, the Japanese war um, against the Chinese, their invasion against the Chinese. You had the Japanese war against the United States that saw the um, the, the, the right stunning success of the invasion of of uh, the Philippines and the uh, and the devastating attack on well not really devastating but the uh, the shocking attack on Pearl Harbor. The Japanese had also invaded um, the uh, the French and British colonies in Southeast Asia and uh, what's known as the Indochine. That um that that uh bit of land, the peninsula, and the islands, um sort of in between India and China, uh, places like um like Thailand now and uh, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, and so forth. They were all targeted by the Japanese. Um, has two were the um, Indonesia, what we now consider Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, um, and Australia was also um, coming under increased increasing um, uh, targeting by the Japanese um, and of course in, uh, in Africa the Italians had been uh, seeking to conquer the French colonies of North Africa as well as the British colonies in Africa they had, uh, they had been expanding into um, places like Algeria from Libya in, and, uh, and also into Egypt um, they also had designs on conquering Ethiopia. They had launched an invasion of Ethiopia in uh, the mid 1930s, and were also attempting to take uh, British Somali Somali land as well as French Somali land um, uh, from from their bases in uh, in um, what we what would then call Italian Somali land, um, what we now consider the the countries of Somalia, Djibouti, and Eritrea. Uh, while the Germans, the German wars were against the, uh, uh, and in the, for the most part the German wars had largely concluded, but they were against the, uh, the Soviet Union, uh, they were against uh, Norway, Denmark, Belgium, Luxembourg, um, the Netherlands, and France, with the United Kingdom being the, uh, the sole remaining combatant, enemy combatant in, uh, in Europe. The German declaration of war against the United States uh, in fulfillment of the tripartite pact linked these wars. Um, the Italian declaration, the wars, uh, the declaration of wars between the uh, United States and Italy followed suit, um, and they really, uh, they really linked those. They, they really linked the global struggles, but they did not link them completely. For example, Russia, uh, the Soviet Union, and the Empire of Japan were not at war until uh, 1945. They, they, they remained at peace and they, and they continued to have very cordial relations up until that declaration of war. Um, okay, and so with that being said, let's dive right into our, uh, our lecture for today. And uh, to begin with, let me just say that popular opinion holds that the United States, uh, particularly this is opinion in the United States, that the United States was single Handedly responsible for the defeat of the Axis powers. The United States provided the arms, the equipment um, lent, uh, to the Allies via the Lend Lease pro Program. The United States also mobilized her economy and armed forces in a manner unseen before in the history of the Republic, uh, dwarfing the militarization and the mobilizations of, of the economy uh, that, um, that, that proceeded during the uh, United States Civil War. And the entry into World War One. Now, the popular view holds that the United States enjoy, uh, deployed her forces around the world, destroying the German and Italian armies in major battles, then destroyed the Japanese armies and navies in the Pacific. Uh, now, the narrative also holds that the United States Air Force 
um, destroyed Germany uh, and, and Japanese uh, industrial capacity. Now, these actions culminated in the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, furthermore, during the war, the Republic realized that, uh, that, that it had made a terrible mistake in not joining the League of Nations and had a second chance to correct uh, to, to correct the, the, this misact by joining the, uh, the, the infant United Nations um, and lending real muscle and power and influence behind this new collective uh, security bargaining agreement. Um, the lesson of Munich and Pearl Harbor was that the military unpreparedness led to disaster uh, for the first time um, uh, th th those were the lessons. Um, Munich, of course, is the Munich Agreement of 1938 um, in which Hitler was appeased again but bought time for the British and the French to prepare for war. And of course, Pearl Harbor was just um, uh, the, the, the attack that the United States military was not uh, prepared enough, was not um, strong enough to foresee and prevent that attack. Um, This led to uh, the idea that the Republic should never be caught unaware again. And for the first time um, after World War II, when the nation returned to peace, she did so without disarming and she maintained uh, a, a, a very, very strong military presence. Uh, Harry, as Harry Truman said, the weakness of the great Republic invites the uh, men of ill will to shake the very foundations of civilization all over the world. We seek to use our military to solely to preserve the peace of the world um, for, for we know the only sure way to make our own freedom, uh, our own freedom secure. Um, that, that was Harry Truman on his decision to not demobilize um, large numbers of American forces. Now, the narrative, this narrative also holds that Franklin Roosevelt's only fault was his inability to see Stalin have the new threat uh, and that the impeachments he made to Stalin failed. Um, the most infamous of which was the Yalta Conference where he supposedly gave away half of the free world to the dictator for promises of free elections. Now, Soviet entry uh, into the war against the Japanese uh, and, and, and Soviet support for the United Nations um, were, were all quote unquote the gains, the bargaining gains uh, for, uh, that Roosevelt got back for his appeasement to, uh, to Stalin. And all of these failed and, and led to the Cold War. Um, the, uh, the war, the war was won by an allied coalition. Um, consisting of the uh, the British uh, and and the Commonwealth, the United States, and the Soviet Union, um, and but we also cannot discount the uh, the efforts of the Chinese in resisting the Japanese and wearing down the Japanese. Um, the United States put 15 million Americans in uniform during war during the war during World War Two. Um, which constituted less than 13% of the total population, one of the lowest mobilization percentages of, of any of the major belligerents uh, during the war. Uh, American forces constituted only 25% of Allied forces during the war. Um, now, the United States did produce nearly two-thirds of the war material used to defeat the Axis, um, and this was possible because of the protected geographic position of the United States um, uh, and, and of course the size of the United States economy. The United States was the only major belligerent not to suffer an invasion or have a city bombed. The only major enemy action to occur uh, in American territory was Pearl Harbor. The United Kingdom, the Commonwealth countries, the British colonies, uh, they all played a very large role. Um, and a very important role in, in the war. Um, every victory claimed by the Americans in North Africa, the Mediterranean, and Europe was supported 
by an inordinate effort and an inordinate amount of uh, of men fighting from the fighting from uh, from uh, either the uh, the United Kingdom itself, the Commonwealth nations, or from the colonies, uh, the British colonies. Um, their contributions were especially important during the Normandy invasion, where they took and held three of the five beaches. Um, the war would have ended, and, and it, this is something that needs to be uh, rightly understood, the war would have ended in total German victory in 1945 if the British had not successfully fought alone. Uh, the Commonwealth, I should say, had not successfully fought alone against the Nazis. Uh, the British were at a loss in comprehending the American approach to the war. Um, the Soviets played a, uh, the, perhaps the most crucial role in the defeat of Nazi Germany. Their casualties alone dwarfed those of all other combatants. Tens of millions died in the Soviet war effort for, for, uh, for victory. Um, the United Kingdom the United States uh, sustained 407,300 uh, casualties in World War II, which is less than half of the losses the Soviets sustained at the Battle of Stalingrad. Uh, the total number of British and American losses are between 8 and 9, uh, 8 and 900,000, far below the 20 to 25 million casualties the Russians suffered throughout the war. Uh, the Russians also inflicted more than 90% of all German casualties. Um, also, the Russians were, were left uh, on the hook, so to speak, uh, waiting for aid um, that, that, that would uh, force the Germans to withdraw their pressure uh, in the east and force them to deploy um, their forces in the west. Um, that, that, that aid did not come until 1944, a two-year delay that, that, uh, that the Russians did not forget, that the Soviet Union did not forget. Um, the Soviet uh, contribution was vast. In, uh, in the summer of 1944, the Red Army destroyed German Army Group Center. Uh, they inflicted 900,000 casualties on the Germans, far higher than the total number of German troops deployed on the Western Front at... Um, at, at that point, or at any point, Roosevelt's dealings with Stalin's were, were, were should, should not be taken um, uh, lightly. For for one, uh, Stalin did not believe that that Roosevelt was was naive. Stalin, for one, uh, considered Roosevelt to be sly and calculating. Um, at the Yalta conference. Uh, at the Alta Conference where they met, um, you, you, it should not be taken um, that, that they were discussing a permanent settlement. It was a wartime meeting, not a peace conference. It was a wartime meeting of allies. The agreements made at Malta, uh, no, sorry, not Malta, Yalta, sorry about that. Uh, those agreements were, uh, were, were made to um, strengthen the alliance, to preserve the alliance, and to keep everybody fighting towards the same goal, um, German defeat. Um, there was um, a, a strong motivation to keep the alliance going after the war so that the Germans could not rise up again and start a third world war, um, which was the fear of, of, all, those, of, of all those involved. Um, the post uh, war peace conference never took place because the, the tensions between the United States and the Soviet Union resulted in the Cold War, uh, which led to a viewing of Yalta as a peace conference rather than a, um, a, a meeting between those military alliances, those, those military allies. Um, now, at Yalta, Roosevelt never gave away any territory held by United States forces. Indeed, he walked away with uh, some very favorable bargains um, from Stalin despite the weakness of the United States military at the time. Yalta occurred in February of 1945. The Battle of the Bulge was just ending. The Allies had not entered, um, had not entered Germany proper. They had not crossed the Rhine. At that point, the, the Soviet Army, in contrast, 
was in the was a uh, was at that point in the outskirts of Berlin. Now, despite this, Roosevelt obtained large German fears for the United States, Great Britain, and France. Great Britain wanted France to also be a part of this as well. Um, while in East Asia, he played uh, modestly. He uh, he he uh, he parlayed modestly for Soviet aid against the Japanese in the East, uh, and the war was still very strong, and it was still very tough fighting in the East. Uh, the United States Army and Navy was having a very difficult time combating the the Japanese. Now the atomic bomb did not exist, and nobody knew. If the, if the Manhattan Project would yield positive results or not. At Yalta, Roosevelt also got Stalin to agree to a deal with only, uh, with only recognizing and only dealing with Chiang Kai-shek's government and not Mao Zedong's communist government. That was a, that was a wonderful stroke of genius that was fierce negotiating. Um, Stalin also gave way regarding the United Nations uh, veto vote and the General Assembly. Uh, the promises of free elections and the land held by the Soviets was the best that could be obtained. Uh, Roosevelt's actions do not fit the mold of appeasement. A strike the observer has deft diplomacy and bargaining. If anything, Stalin with the appeaser, Stalin with appeasing Roosevelt in order to keep the war effort going. That's the observation that, that one can make from, uh, from, from, uh, from the geopolitical realities of February in 1945. Now, now there are numerous reasons to continue the myths associated with World War II. Many of the myths uh, reinforce preconceived notions held by most Americans. Um, democratic elections, American faith in elections, um, it, it's directly threatened by the fact that, that, uh, that voters brought Hitler and Mussolini to power or that their political parties were the dominant groups. It is uneasy and uncomfortable to admit that Hitler was elected by democratic means. Uh, other myths involve the belief that the United States was isolationist or even naive, that the politicians of the 30s and 20s and the 40s were naive. The overestimation of the Republic war effort is a part of a shared ethnocentric or nationalistic view that all major belligerents present themselves as the one power that spearheaded the drive to victory. The downplaying of the Soviet contributions um, is really calculated uh, had the move done during the, the Cold War. It was not, uh, it, it did not sit well with our perception of the war had the good war uh, to know that we were fighting um, for victory and that our victory depended on the aid of a bloody dictator, Joseph Stalin. Or with our um, then current, during the, during the Cold War, that would have been current, um, global adversary, the Communist Soviet Union, it would not have done in, 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 uh, in the Cold War era. Now the conspiracy theories reflect an anachronistic projection of contemporary knowledge of events onto policy makers of the past who did not uh, have such knowledge. The view of later events, um, the, the view of later events that, that took place after Yalta, namely the crumbling of the German forces in the West in May and April of 1945, or the atomic bomb, or, or that the uh, atomic bomb would be functional and successful by August, um, though those are real leaps. There is a, a natural tendency to make and use historical analogies to support preconceived notions. Um, the myths and misconceptions regarding World War II have served to further the American policies during the Cold War. Every president since Roosevelt, in one way or another, has largely come to use um, has largely uh, come, to, uh, come to use the myths of World War II for foreign intervention. Whether you're looking at Korea, Vietnam, Cuba, or, or, or Iraq and Afghanistan. Um, the myths are used by policymakers um, who themselves believe in what they're saying. They, 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 um, the, the myths are con as, um, 
The myths are consistently believed and they have consistently led to disaster or near disaster. Uh, the, the, the disasters emphasize the fact that the faulty perceptions of history are in some ways more important than what happened. Um, as we have seen with the, with the outbreak of the Civil War, people act on the basis of their perceptions. Um, when perceptions differ from historical reality, they lead to disaster. And with that, we end. We come to our conclusion, our, uh, our overview, and then our analysis of World War II. Um, as always, hit like, subscribe, and comment. Thank you for watching. Thank you for viewing. I'm Ted, and I will see you guys next time for another lecture.